It's been more than six years since scientists using a telescope in Hawaii saw a cigar-shaped object hurtling through the solar system. Now it's somewhere between the orbits of Saturn and Neptune, heading for the exit, back into interstellar space. It is no longer visible to any ground or space telescopes, but astronomers are still wondering what it was. It bears no complete resemblance to anything already known. At first, it was assumed to be an asteroid ejected from its stellar space. Then it was thought to be a comet that had broken away from its home planetary system. But it's still similar in composition to an asteroid and in color to a comet. Astronomers have tried to learn something from it by studying it, but nothing has provided a definitive solution. Most confusing of all was its shape. It's too long. There's nothing like it in the solar system. Our comets are like potato tubers. What to compare them to? Theories began to emerge, one more fantastic than the other. What if it's a fragment of an alien structure that suddenly got this far? This is one of the assumptions that have arisen about this unknown space body. It violated the boundaries of the solar system, passed several planets, and approached the Earth. The International Astronomical Union faced such a situation for the first time, it changed the official designation of the object three times during the year. It managed to classify it as a Comet C-2017 U1, then as an Asteroid A-2017 U1. In the end, they decided not to agonize and simply called it 1i, which means the first interstellar. There's no way to identify the object any more precisely. The only thing astronomers have no doubt about is that it is not from any distant galaxy, but from our own, the Milky Way. So there may not be comets and asteroids near a neighboring star like ours. There is something else, differently organized, moving quite differently than space bodies near the Sun. And that space has its own events, its own catastrophes. And it happens that some phenomena so baffle scientists that they discover a planet that never existed. Astronomers have been observing and trying to study the non-existent Fomal Holt B for several years. The planet was not only given a name, but also many characteristics. The discovery was a big sensation. But in the end, it was a big mistake. Twice, first in 2004, then two years later, the Hubble telescopes and the constellations of South Pisces. The resulting images were processed, and when compared, they saw that in all frames near the star Fomal Hort is one point, which for two years has moved a little. It was decided that the dot was orbiting the star. Just like our Earth around the Sun, which means there's a planet there too. It turns out that a dense cloud of dust had been mistaken for a planet. According to the latest data, it has not disappeared, has become less dense, expanding to a size comparable to the Earth's orbit around the Sun. With such parameters, the cloud can no longer be confused with a planet. Why are there difficulties in finding planets? They are larger than anything in space, familiar and understandable to astrophysicists, but only within the boundaries of the solar system. All models fall apart when the universe is studied a little further out. The planet in Alpha Centauri was not confused with anything and was found in an empty place, but its discovery managed to become such a high-profile event that they were going to create a starship to send to it. The planet near Alpha Centauri drew special interest. It's the closest star system to us. If humanity ever gets beyond the solar system, it will head there first. There are three stars nearby and astronomers were sure that there must be planets near them. And so, in October 2012, the discovery finally happened. The news came one after another. The planet, which was named Alpha Centauri b, 
was attributed to the super-Earths. It was calculated to be 1.5 times the mass of our Earth. Then they came up with data on its surface temperature. It turned out that it could reach 1,200 degrees Celsius. That's higher than even very hot Venus. The planet discovery was not suitable for life, but the fact of its discovery did not become less sensational. To assume that later absolutely all the data will be refuted, no one could. Scientific excitement around Alpha Centauri B did not decrease for a long time. Several other research groups joined the study. Among them were especially meticulous ones, who decided to check the previous information, and they did not match. 459 repeated measurements did not yield the same results. It's still not clear why they miscalculated in the first place. The official report says, the planet was detected by an extremely accurate instrument. Your text is quite well written, but I've made a few minor corrections for clarity and grammar. This is the Harms spectrograph on the telescope at the Chilean Observatory. There's a one in a thousand chance of error. And it happened. There's something going on around the star. It's probably much more significant than a moving planet. But so far, the nature of this phenomenon has not been determined. In the end, Three years after the discovery of the planet Alpha Centauri b, it was officially declared non-existent. Planets outside the solar system are some of the most difficult objects for astrophysicists to study. They are impossible to see. They emit no light at all. To assume that somewhere out there, in a certain region of the distant universe, there is a planet, you can only observe the star if its light periodically overlaps or obscures something, most likely a planet. This is the transit method of detection. This is how the planet Fomalhaut b was discovered, but it later turned out to be a cloud of cosmic dust. There are times when a star wobbles slightly. That can also mean it's being affected by a planet. That's how Alpha Centauri b was found. The one that had to be declared non-existent after it was discovered. It turns out that seven Earth-like planets have also been found around the star TRAPPIST-1. More than 400 planets have been discovered using this method. Could there be a mistake everywhere? The solar system is considered to be well studied. There are space research stations and probes circling almost its entire orbit. There are a few record breakers, two pioneers and two voyagers, which are already on their way to other star systems. But we have yet to fully discover what's hidden in our home stretch of the universe. Beyond Neptune, there's a vast region, and in it, an object of colossal size. It's listed in many scientific programs and official documents. But it exists only hypothetically. In the 1950s, Dutch astrophysicist Jan Oort suggested that there is some cloud, remote from the Sun, where the nuclei of comets are stored. If there was no such larder, their bodies of compressed ice would gradually vaporize and eventually fall apart. But they come, they go, they come back, like Halley's Comet, making another visit every 75 years. The next coming is expected on July 28th of the year 2061. But it then flies only beyond Neptune, no farther. And there are comets with a longer period. They approach the Sun no more than once every 200 years, and some may not appear for thousands of years. Where are they hiding all this time, resting from risky FLYBYS near the Sun? Oort hypothesized that there was such a hiding place. Now it is already established that these comets move in elongated orbits, going beyond Neptune and Pluto and further, beyond the very edge of the solar system. And there's something out there, some kind of cosmic territory that's named after astronomer Oort. But we need proof. It's taken more than half a century to find it. The hope was the Voyager 2 probe. 
It was launched from Earth 47 years ago. It's now 19 billion kilometers from the Sun. But even the record-breaking Voyager 2 will not soon reach the Oort cloud. The hypothetical terrain should be at the junction of the solar system. But this junction in space has different parameters than we have on Earth. It would take Voyager 300 years, no less, to get there. And only then will it approach the Oort cloud. The following figures sound even more fantastic. It will take 30,000 years for a research probe to cross the Oort cloud. That's its size. But even then, neither one nor the second of the voyages will help us to find out what is there, in reality. In the hypothetically existing space cloud, everything is conditional and may not be true. Its size, boundaries, comets, their number and similar structures cannot be studied. The farther away from us, the more unknown. The neighboring galaxy is two and a half million light years away. There are at least one trillion stars there. The final image of Andromeda contains a record number of pixels, one and a half billion, more than in a photograph of any other object in the universe. All the stars are there. Huge and massive, small and already a little faded. But they are all in their place, just as they are out there in space. It's not easy to put together an unmistakable snapshot and fit a colossal number of bright spots. And this, in the middle of a few dozen bright stars, is a cosmic caterpillar 9 trillion kilometers long. The effort of a single telescope was not enough to cover this scale. In this image, the data mined over several years. In 2003, the Isaac Newton ground-based telescope saw a strangely shaped object. Long observations followed. But more information has come to light recently. Hubble discerned that it is so brightly glowing and has a huge tail stretching for 3 million kilometers. Astronomers have already drawn conclusions and are confident that this object is going through an amazing stage of evolution. It's a protostar. It's now elongated and really looks like a caterpillar. Later, it will become like our sun. It's true, calculations show that it will be about 10 times its mass. But this is how stars are born, gathering material, gas and dust around them, twisting into unimaginable shapes. On the Space Telescope Institute's website, you can vote on which part of the universe Hubble will photograph. What gets the most votes is where the telescope will point its sensors. Perhaps it will find something in the universe like this planetary nebula called the Butterfly Nebula. It was discovered a few years ago. But it took time to decipher the data and process the images. And now the image is ready. In this view, the cosmos looks unexpected, very different, unfathomable to humans. People for a significant part of their history could exploit only by thinking, assuming and fantasizing. But now it's different. Telescopes look in there and bring us the real wonders of the universe.